Welcome back, MTG Joe here. Today we are going to be doing things a little bit different for the metagame breakdown. Historic is largely two decks, it seems, at least based on the stats, um, in terms of volume of games played. You still get some diversity, but what we can see here is it Wizards, Mono Green Devotion make up about half of the games you're going to run into. Now we can go through and cover the same Wizards deck, the same Mono Green deck. Frankly, I'm a little tired of talking about those. So today we are going to cover three decks that have high win rates that are a little bit more rogue. They are some archetypes of past, some upgrades, some decks that have kind of had a resurgence. And these are decks that have a high win rate, but just don't have huge volume of games. So the intent is to kind of bring in some diversity, give you some ideas that are outside of the norm. So we're not going to be covering Wizards here. We're not going to be covering Devotion, Convoke, Azorius Control, um, Yogmoth, Ninjas. We're not going to be doing those. Those decks are largely the same. So we're going to cover three decks today. We're getting the data from Untapped GG, um, and hopefully it gives you some ideas, gives you something to kind of go with. We'll come back next week and we'll do the regular schedule. These are the best decks uh, that will allow some time to see if any of the heist cards have made their way into this format. Uh, Alchemy has been taken over by Heist, which is the new Alchemy drop. Uh, we're also getting Modern Horizons in a couple weeks, which will also shake up the format. So the first deck is Zorius Hammer Time. So we've had Boros Hammer Time. We've had various other Hammer Times. This deck, 32 matches played, but 84% best of three win rate. And the card that's kind of pulling it together now is Stoneforge Mystic. Very powerful card going back to Legacy. Uh, Modern plays it the various stone blade decks usually to hold swords, but this is using the hammer time combo. So Stoneboard Mystic can help you tutor up your Colossus Hammer. Now, normally the downside of Colossus Hammer is it costs eight to equip a lot of mana. We're not mono green devotion here, uh, but you use Sigarda's Aid, which allows you to flash in your equipment and auto equip it to your various creatures. So tutor it, flash it in, equip value. Um, it also, with Stoneforge, lets you play around counters by putting the equipment from your hand onto the battlefield. You also have Kemba's Outfitter, which is an alchemy card, but basically allows you to retool the text on Colossal Hammer. So you can get your little Sharpie, you cross out the eight, you put a, a, a one. Now it only costs one to equip, which makes it a lot more uh, usable. Um, We've seen in the past some of these lists play like the Bant, they'll play Invisible Stalker just as a tough deal threat. Um, this one's using the new Emporium Thopterist. So at the beginning of your upkeep, you conjure a card named Ornithopter into your hand. So you have kind of the backup plan as well with Retrofitter Foundry uh, that allows you to have the Thopter plan. So you have your normal Ornithopters, your other Ornithopters, this is a Lord for your Thopters. So it lets you attack on two angles because sometimes what'll happen with these types of decks you can have all the hammers in the world, but no creatures to, to hammer time. And then you kind of get stuck like that. Stoneforge also allows you to access both a Shadow Sphere as well as Lava Spur Boots as uh, additional equipments. Otherwise, you have Esper Sentinel for tax, uh, Giver of Ruins for protection, and uh, so a couple of Spell Pierces, Surge of Salvation. You're also seeing the Fumari Vault, a big score mythic. Hopefully you rare drafted in your... Uh, recent Outlaws of Thunder Junction draft, I know I did. But for three mana, you can discard a card, look at the top X cards of your library, where X is the number of artifacts you control, put one of those cards into your hand. Just card advantage, stapled onto a kind of utility land, so some value there. Uh, your sideboard, authority of the consoles for any sort of aggressive decks, things that coming in without haste, gains you some life, fragment reality, path to exile's removal, fifth needle for activated abilities, Protection effects with slip out the back, spell pierce, containment priest for any sort of like vein ripper shenanigans, anything being trying to be cheated into play, invisible stalker for the heavy removal matchups, and then a license first for graveyard hate. So, hammer time. From there, we go to Rakdos midrange, what was once the best deck with Bowmaster One Ring has kind of fallen off, but we're seeing a resurgence with the deck. 78% win rate with this version here. And just a lot of powerful effects. You have six discard effects, your fatal push, just a couple copies of Dragon Rage Chandler. Now, notably with this, Dragon Rage Chandler is nerfed in this format. It becomes a 3 1, not a 3 3. So just keep that in mind. Uh, meat hooks in here, also nerfed. Uh, basically, you 
only drain, you don't gain. Uh, some blood tithes, so a little bit interesting. The list is putting up some reasonable results from Diamond to Mythic, but some interesting choices just in terms of the number of cards, like three blood tithe, this is usually a four of, only two fatal push. You could probably tweak along the edges as you play, but this offers quite a bit of flexibility. Card, like, Culling Ritual is interesting because it gives you the flexibility against, like, Convoke and the more aggressive decks, but then also against, like, Shieldred Mirrors is a, an answer. So some interesting choices there. Valky on the top end, now notably no Jace Valky in this one. Um, one of my favorite cards ever, Season Pyromancer in here, so I'm naturally biased towards the deck, but uh, just a lot of powerful cards all mixed into here. Uh, notably without fetches, you're still seeing some copies of Rockus Theater, the Haunted Ridge in there as well. I, I do think without the... you don't need the Field of Ruin necessarily. I guess it helps in the Mono Green matchup, but you do have a number of like red, red, black, 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 uh, like black on one or red on one needed. So I don't know if you want to play all those fields. Uh, sideboard, just anything coming into play, like from graveyards or library. Feed the Swarm is catch all removal, long goodbye, encounterable removal. Liliana for like the control matchups, which is vengeance for a sweeper against tribal decks. Chandra, Chandra, Chandra for the grindier matchups. Karavek for like the tokens, Convoke, stuff like that. Leyline versus graveyard decks, and then any of the artifact decks, you have Shatterstorm in here as well. And then lastly, Fish for eye time, Simic Fish, 67% win rate. So this deck here is all about the Merfolk synergy. So you have Lords in Voldean Hexcatcher, which lets you force spike with any of your creatures. Uh, Mistbinder is a Lord, Master Pearl Trident as an unblockable, or gives your, your creatures Island Walk. Mirror Regery as another Lord that taps and taps. Sylvian as a way to give your other creatures Ward. Draws you cards, Tide Binder for activated abilities. Merfolk Tunnel Guide is basically gives your next three creatures Explore, which is really sweet. So it gives you some card advantage there. Um, and then just a number of like one drop utility creatures with some collected company mixed in. Uh, this deck takes advantage of Cavernous Souls, which is nice. You also have like Waterlogged. You have some try lines and mixed into the deck. Sideboard, just anything cheating into play stuff. Now, notably, if you're bringing this in, take out your co collected companies. This is a non bow. Um, you have Miss Caller, which also kind of plays a similar effect that can be collected company. Probably wouldn't bring in all these. That's a lot of sideboard slots devoted to it. I would probably consider more spell piece pierces, aether gusts, stuff of that nature, which can have some utility there. Uh, when you just need like a bigger kind of grindier creature, you have Sentinel, the Nameless City, Savage Swipe as removal, Fade from History, similar uh, that allows you to have artifact enchantment hate and then sleep in the kind of creature mirrors, convoke mirrors, tap down their things, Alpha Strike in. So that was a quick, dirty, and easy three decks to consider. Let me know if you've been playing any of these, if you like them. Uh, and just generally let me know what you think about this segment. Instead of doing like deep, deep dive, just focusing on three more kind of rogue, not heavily played, but are putting up good stats decks on their own. And trying to do it with like the community-driven decks, like individual performers from Mythic, kind of highlighting those, but trying to shift things up a bit. Some of the formats are a little bit stale. So I'm trying to find some of that spice and just kind of new decks and kind of new things people are trying out in in the mess of all the wizards in mono green thanks for watching hope you have a great one stay safe out there